Welcome to Education Beat. I'm Ann Vasquez, Executive Director at EdSource. A decade after a landmark report on English learners, California is still lagging in helping students become proficient in English by their sixth year in school. Students who take longer than six years to learn English are known as long-term English learners, and they're at risk of missing out on academic work in other classes unless schools do more to support them. These are students that can already speak English. So a lot of times their needs might be hidden. The struggles that they have is when it comes to learning the academic language. A new report released last month by the coalition Californians Together highlights innovative approaches that some districts have taken to support long-term English learners. In this week's episode, we'll hear about how one particular program used robotics to help bridge the gap. Here is this week's Education Beat with host Zadie Stavely. When you think of a class to teach students English as a second language, you probably picture kids memorizing vocab words and hammering on grammar rules. You probably don't imagine students programming tiny robots to flash messages and lights, spin in circles, and draw shapes on paper. But that's exactly what students in one eighth grade English language class in Elk Grove Unified School District did last year during distance learning. And as you can see here, I turn the Gigglebot on and it spins. And as it spins and when it stops, it shows the um, LED display of the word I love you and the rainbow. It all started when the district looked at their data on high school English language learners and found that English learners were less likely than other students to enroll in career pathways. Those are classes in which students learn technical skills for a career, like computer science, at the same time they learn academic content. Part of the problem was that students who were still learning English in high school couldn't take as many electives because they still had to take an English as a second language class. We know how important electives are for all students, and especially for long-term English learners who have a history of not being engaged in school and not really seeing themselves as um, being a part of a school in many cases. Caroline Martin is an instructional coach who helps teachers with English learners in Elk Grove. She says teachers also reported that students who'd been learning English for many years were not very engaged in their English language classes. Many of them felt discouraged. And so we were trying to figure out ways that we could both satisfy their designated ELD requirement while also bringing them into the world of electives and career and technological education. So the district decided to try something new. Caroline spent a few weeks in an eighth grade English language development class and taught students a little bit of computer programming. Each student got a small robot called a Gigglebot sent to their house. And then Caroline walked them through how to program them to move and how to display a design in lights. A lot of them had come up with like ways in which they would drive around a room. And so they would video that and they had to explain every little movement that the robot made. And we had to see their actual like programming language and how that correlated to what the output was. There were some um, that there's a little hole at the top where they could stick a pen in and put a piece of paper down. So some of them programmed them to actually draw something or write a message. One student made her robot display, I heart you in the LED lights. Others had them light up in a rainbow, move forward and back. One had her robot draw a square on a piece of paper. And Caroline says something kind of magical happened. I knew a lot of these kids before, like I worked with them in seventh grade and I just wouldn't have necessarily pictured some of them. Like, wow, like that kid really opened up here. And I have never heard him speak longer than two sentences consecutively before. So, I mean, it was just kind of like those surprises. And my expectations are always high of them, but it was just really interesting to see how something related to computer science had the magic, like, to make them really open up. This is Education Beat, getting to the heart of California schools. I'm Zadie Stavely. This week, how robots helped kids learn English. Elk Grove Unified's computer programming English language class is featured in a new report called Renewing Our Promise, Research and Recommendations to Support California's Long-Term English Learners. It was published by the group Californians Together. This report comes a decade after another report on long-term English learners released by the same organization in 2010. 
That report is still referenced by lots of teachers and education experts today. You might have heard of it. It was the first to put a name to this phenomenon of students who spend years in English language schools without fully learning academic English. I spoke with Manuel Buenrostro, the policy associate at Californians Together. He says long-term English learners, these students who have been here for years, they speak English. In fact, they often speak it better than they speak the language their parents speak at home. So they, these are students that, that can already speak English, right? They can be in the playground, they're speaking English. So a lot of times their needs might be hidden because they've been in the country or they've been in the school system for many years. But the struggles that they have is when it comes to learning the academic language to be able to engage in the science content and the math content. So that's a little bit different from when we think about a newcomer student uh, where these are students that are literally learning the, uh, the language from beginning. California made major changes after that first report was published in 2010. The state now requires districts to identify students who are long-term English learners or who are close to becoming long-term English learners. In addition, specific strategies for supporting these students are included in state guides like the English Learner Roadmap. Californians Together found that the percentage of English learners in middle and high school who are long-term English learners has decreased from 52% in 2015 to 46% in 2019. So that's, that's positive. At the same time, we know that there's this growth, but we know that it hasn't been fast enough. They also surveyed more than 100 school districts in the state with the greatest number or percentage of English learners. And they found that many school districts are using practices based on research to help students become fluent faster. Many districts are making sure long-term English learners take courses they need to attend college, providing mentors and instructional aids. But they also found many districts are not doing enough to provide assistance in students' home languages, professional development about the needs of long-term English learners, and instructional materials designed specifically for these students. Manuel says some districts have special classes just for long-term English learners, since they have different needs for learning English than, say, students who just arrived here from another country. But he says districts need to make sure those courses are rigorous. We want to make sure, especially in the middle school and high school level, that they are part of a pathway for students to uh, be college and career ready. That is very important. And then the other, the other issue that we have is we also want to make sure that our English learners are not um, taking classes in a separated environment where they're not able to be in courses with other students, right? With the supports that they need, of course, but it's important that, that, they, that they don't have a completely separate track within the education system. Helping English learners move towards courses they might not otherwise take brings us back to Elk Grove, where Caroline Martin began teaching a little bit of robotics in English language classes. Caroline didn't just teach English learners how to program the robots. She also had them explain what they were doing in English. She tried to incorporate skills that the students need in order to pass the English language proficiency test, known as the LPAC. There's a part of the LPAC test where they do um, summarize an academic presentation, where they're given three pictures and then they have to listen to like two and a half minutes of direct instruction or explanation on what they're looking at in the pictures. And so I did a modified thing with them where it, they would have to explain how computers work. And at that very basic level, we just focused on using sequence words, the ones that show an order of something. So like first, second, next, after that. So... Then we would build in some content area of vocabulary, like processing, output, and input. And then once they got that and they had practice, I had them recording themselves, explaining everything I had them do. And so they had those language objectives throughout the whole entire time. And then at the very end, they had to explain in their final project, using some of the same structures we've been practicing, a really kind of complex process of, of programming. Here's a little bit of some of those students' final projects. I use block coding to get my um, programming and to also to write this program. And there were three goals. The first one is to was to get my micro bit to show a looping LED display of the word I love you. That my second one was first we'll need to give the computer some sort of information. This part is called input. Then the computer will process the info that was given to him. 
This is called process. I had several challenges and difficulties, but one of the common ones may be learning how to program it. Like in the beginning, it was really hard to understand like the vocabulary and like how you should program things, and especially when we had to like write scripts and stuff for it. They did a phenomenal job. I, to this day, you know, I'm so impressed because when I've instructed academic language before, it's always felt kind of forced. But by the time we got to the end, it was very much owned by the kids. Caroline had the students answer surveys after the computer science unit was done. One of the questions was whether the students felt they had met the goal of using academic language and developing English language proficiency. All of them said yes, but some of the cool responses were yes, because I noticed that I did better with the academic language to explain how I program things. Another student said, I feel I have met this goal because of my perseverance and determination. Also, I have used sentence frames I used in the past to use the coding explanation. I thoroughly explained the coding of my Gigglebot. Um, and then another one said, I've had to do presentations with all of these words, so now I have a full understanding of those words because of all the presentations I had to do. So um, we did touch, you know, on, on grammar a little bit, but it really was focusing on using that academic in their speaking and their writing and practicing it all the time. Caroline is hoping that these skills will help students pass their English language proficiency tests, but also just do better in academic courses. Caroline has worked with long-term English learners for about 16 years, but she says this experience will change her teaching forever. Because of the amount of engagement and interest and authenticity in what we did and how that really brought out so many great things in kids that, like I said, I hadn't seen the year before in their regular like humanities class where they barely say anything. And, you know, like I thought they were super shy when it turns out like you just got to get them, you know, talking about something that's not just the same old, same old with school, you know. And so I think it goes to show how important project based learning is for our kids um, and especially our long term English learners who really have had that habit of disengagement, a lot of them. And so when something's kind of put in their hands and they're given the freedom, it tends to make a big difference. There was one other really cool thing that happened. English learners are not the only students who are underrepresented in computer science courses. Statewide and in Elk Grove, girls are also less likely to enroll in computer science. But the girls in the English learner class were really into the robotics. I think it just really goes to show how we need to make a bigger effort for not just computer science, but just a bigger effort to match kids up with what makes them tick, even when they don't know it's going to make them tick yet, you know? So I think it really was surprising yet not surprising at the same time that there is so much enthusiasm about it. After this pilot that Caroline did, Elk Grove is planning on expanding the program having computer science and robotics incorporated into any English language development class as long as the teacher agrees. The district also sees the program as a way to expose students to potential career pathways, and not just computer science. Students could learn about other careers where their bilingual skills could be an asset, like teaching or healthcare. We need multilingual people everywhere. <laughs> and so any way that we can, especially if we could help them with developing their other languages alongside English, um, I mean, that would, be, that would be the best case scenario because we know that developing, you know, all the languages that they have access to so that they're literate in all the languages is what's best for them and everyone else and their brains. And so, yeah. And for us as society. Yeah. <laughs> as a nonprofit organization, EdSource relies on listeners like you. Between now and December 31st, EdSource has a goal to raise $100,000 to support our storytelling and in depth reporting. Make your donation today at edsource.org. This is Education Beat getting to the heart of California schools. I'm Zadie Stavely.
Before the break, we heard from Caroline Martin at Elk Grove Unified. That was one of the districts profiled in a recent report about long-term English learners and the strategies districts can take to help them learn English faster and more deeply. The report profiles six other districts, too. For example, Los Angeles Unified, which is tackling a specific aspect of this problem. Across the state, more than a third of long-term English learners are also special education students. The district has started doing special training for both special education teachers and English learner teachers to make sure they're collaborating and talking about how to serve these students best. Garden Grove Unified School District in Southern California has teachers and other staff shadow English learner students for a day, going with them to different classes to see what their experience of school is like. Here's Manuel Buenrostro again. He's one of the authors of the report. And the reason that they do this is, is it allows them to see what the student experience is like. Um, so something that they've learned from the shadowing is that uh, a lot of times the students might not even be speaking in class, right? They might not be raising their hand, right? So their experience might be one where they're, where they're not really practicing language as much. That's important, right? Because it gives you a data point about the student experience. But it also allows them to learn more about the culture. How is a student navigating throughout the school day? Do they have classmates that they can relate to, that they can speak to? Um, are they sitting in front of the classroom? Are they being called on by the teachers often, right? Manuel says it's especially important to look at what districts can do at the elementary school level to help students learn English within six years before they become long-term English learners. Because if we think about an ideal system, in an ideal system in California, no student should become a long-term English learner, right? Every student should be able to get the supports that they need and move out of that profile before they become long-term English learners. There's one school district in San Jose, for example, that expanded its dual language immersion programs, Oak Grove School District. And yep, there are three different school districts in this report that have Grove in the name. Oak Grove uses the Sobrato Early Academic Language Model, which teaches young children complex vocabulary in both English and children's home languages, and has been shown to help students become fluent in English. I love the way that they implemented it in that um, they started off with one school and one grade to make sure that it was successful and done well when they first started the program. And over the years, they have expanded it. So now it's a program where they have certified SEAL teachers in every classroom, in every elementary school in that district. So it's a good example for districts of how you don't have to do everything at once, but you can start small, make sure that it's successful, and then from there, expand it every year so that it has a wider reach. The authors of the report want the state to cut the percentage of long-term English learners in half by 2030. To achieve that goal, they have a bunch of recommendations. First of all, they want the state to begin to collect data on academic achievement, not only for English learners as a whole, but also for long-term English learners. They want the state to require districts to include strategies specifically about long-term English learners in their local control accountability plans. Those are the plans where districts detail how they will spend funding to help low-income students, students in foster care or who are homeless, and English learners. Currently, districts are required to include strategies for English learners, but not for specific subgroups like long-term English learners. There are lots of other recommendations, both for the state and for districts. Manuel says it's urgent. At the rate that we're going, right, we're still going to have way too many long-term English learners unless we continue to add pressure on the system and do more to change the way that we are working with our English learners. Because there's still way too many long-term English learners in California public schools. And we want to make sure that there's a lot more urgency with the work that needs to be done for these students. You can check out my story on long-term English learners at edsource.org. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Education Beat, Getting to the Heart of California Schools, a production of EdSource. Our producer is Kobe McDonald. Special thanks to Caroline Martin, Manuel Buenrostro, and our director, Ann Vasquez. Our theme music is from Blue Dot Sessions. This episode was brought to you by the Sobrato Family Foundation. I'm Zadie Stavely. Next week, we'll be taking a break for Thanksgiving. But join me the week after and subscribe so you won't miss an episode.